fame, fortune, followers. These words seem to preoccupy our already busy lives, but in our pursuit of them, we can lose ourselves along the way. Celebrity photographer and blogger G.E. Hala has seen the impact the incessant desire for fame can have on a celebrity's life. On this episode of Heart to Heart, this celebrity interviewer talks about what really matters in life. He also reveals how love and fame can fit together. Hey everybody, thank you so much for coming on today and joining us on Heart to Heart. I have my amazing brother, G.E. Holla. How you doing, brother? How you doing today? Holla, 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 holla. What's <laughs> happening, man? I'm on heart to heart. Look, everybody can't get on heart to heart. When you make you know this what? channel right here, I'm going to let y'all know y'all become a black royalty in Atlanta. You feel me? So thank you for inviting me to the club. Let me, let me straighten my jacket up a little bit. Brother, it is so good to have you on. You know how it is. I was glad to be on your show where we met. And uh, just amazing energy. Glad to have you on today. And this is a new thing, a relatively newer thing for you being interviewed versus you being the interviewer. So how's it feel being on the other side? Really strange. <laughs> <laughs> but you're cool. No reflection on heart to heart. Heart to heart is the ball. I'm just, you know, I'm really like a reserved, laid back, you know, in a cut type person. So it's all good brother well i'm glad to have you we're gonna have a good talk so it, it's all good look let's jump in there are so many things that are going on uh this last year was crazy and we're already seeing some crazy things this year how did you handle all the changing dynamics of 2020 and the first part first month or so of 2021 that's a very great question brother i just want you to know i'm a traveler in life i never sit still in one place for too long i'm mm -hmm. never around the same people for very long so change is just a part of my dna i'm always trying to constantly grow like you and elevate and become something new something different something better a better version of myself and yeah. i a hard times out there for people but i'm always changing and I, I expect the rain with the sunshine I, I just have to enjoy them both you know I know that's right. That's not, I mean, that's how it's supposed to be. And where, what's your favorite place that you visited uh, or that you've gone to? Ah, uh, so many, so many great places. Oh, may I, may I, I'm not trying to change the question. May I talk about the places I would like to go? Yes, that would be great. Africa. I want to go over yeah. there to all of the non-traditional places. All of the places where people are telling you not to vacation and not to visit, because that's where some of our greatest treasures are over there, and as well as the whole entire globe too as well. Yeah. But is there something about Africa that just pulls me there? How do you feel about that question? What's, what's some favorite places you'd like to visit too? Nice try. It is, uh, nah. <laughs> you ain't gonna do that all here, brother. No, <laughs> No, I, my, my favorite experience was when I was in Italy uh, off of the Mediterranean and got to scuba dive. It was such a beautiful, the clearest water I've ever seen in my life. Just amazing moment and a memory that stuck with me. And that was when I was in my uh, early 20s. So the, just a great memory that stuck with me. And, and I, I love, that's why I still love the beach, even because of that moment. So, but yeah, back to your questions. Um, <laughs> When it comes to your life, uh, you get to interview a lot of big names. You get to meet a lot of different people. And when you interview people, you know this, when you interview people, it can automatically, in many ways, put you on a level close to them, especially depending on their level. Sometimes people will associate a level with you. So that can be difficult when you're trying to get to know someone or date uh, how has that experience been for you when it comes to your brand and what people think about you when it comes to dating? That's a very great question. That's a wonderful question. To be honest with you, I don't allow women on my pages that are interested in me. I don't tell them about my IG, anything. I want you to, to love me, to like me, to know me for who I am, for what you yeah. say. You know, if I, do I fit a part of your flow in life? Because... Mm -hmm. That changes. Even your friends. I got friends now. Cause I interview. Um, I've got to get got a chance to go on an interview with Oprah, and bro, they have just been blowing my phone up. Like, what's up, superstar? And I'm like, uh, it's not that deep. But I, <laughs> you know, because I was as a kid growing up, same way with yourself. I'm pretty sure you saw people on TV. He was like, wow, 
still really amazing. But I'm just yeah. man, you know, I, I eat where you eat. I shop, <laughs> where you, shop. <laughs> you know, my head is nappy now. I got the hat on, you know, I'm a regular everyday cool guy. Like it's great to have those wins, as you know, and be around yeah. those wonderful people. But at the end of the day, you know, we all breathe in the same air, one pants leg at a time, you know, the same old cliche stuff you heard the whole time. That is the truth. But 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 it's true. We, we're in an interesting space in society because we're seeing even more. We used to have the leading anchors be the people that were famous on, on TV. But now a regular anchor on CNN can have 100,000 to a million followers because it's just they're on TV. And being in the spotlight in some way gets you renowned. Um, and I get the connection with people on a level where they're connecting maybe with the wrong motive or the wrong intention. Um, so you do a good job by blocking people from uh, women from getting on your profile pages. But how do you keep your public and private life separate? Ah, wonderful question. I am an Aquarius. We are very creative, like hidden introvert slash extrovert understanding. For me personally, I just don't talk about it. You know, I let people speculate whatever they would like. You know, some people look at me like, oh, you're a pimp, you're a player. You got all these ladies around you. I don't, I never answer their questions. I just say, that's your view of it. That's what you think then. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, that's that's good. Uh, one of my favorite people to watch is Gary V. And he often talks about his public life versus his private life. He's one of the most private public people, as he says, where you will not know about his kids. You never see a picture of his, his home. You, it's always work, but he's very open about a lot of things. He just chooses what he shares and what he doesn't. How did you decide what things you were going to share and what things you weren't? Um, on social media? That's a very quick question. Um, I look at my life and my my inner part of my life is, is sacred. It's like a temple. And I think that when you start sharing those things with people, to someone who doesn't uh, understand you or move how you move, it may seem weird. Or you may even put yourself in a position to become a meme or a gift if you're not <laughs> careful of, you know, even your personal beliefs or how you live. Like most people might wake up won't even brush their teeth and get right on the phone. And to people that wake up and brush their teeth, for an example, they will go, ooh, that's nasty. Why would you, how could you wake up and not brush your teeth first? So I learned that long time ago is your 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 household or your private life is an inner sanctum and mm -hmm. never share those things because to me in my world, they're not important. You're coming here for the media. You're coming here for the celebrities. Even when we had you on the show, they're, they came there to listen to you and not me. So I know how to step back into the darkness, so to speak, and let the light be on what I want the light to be on to. So. That's smart, man. That's smart. I, I remember my aunt, and this was when I was young. I don't know why this stuck with me, but when I was young, um, I remember sitting over at her house for the first time and eating, and she was like, go brush your teeth. And I was like, we're about to eat. She was like, no, go brush your teeth. What do you mean you don't brush your teeth before you eat? I was like, uh, after, right? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, uh, after, uh, that's not how I was raised. I don't know that about brushing your teeth before you eat. I don't get the logic of that, but, uh, that was her thing. And so I, I get the judgment piece that people have a different perception of what is right, what is wrong, what is feasible and not feasible. And so, uh, yeah, that I get it. I get wanting to hide some things or, or just keep some things to yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you've had to adapt a little bit. Uh, when it comes to some of the things you've done, especially because of COVID, a lot of people have had to go virtual when it comes to the work that they do. So how are you adjusting to the virtual life with COVID? Um, amongst having us suffering, you know, rest in peace, rest in heaven to those who have passed away from uh, the disease and the virus, is that for me, I've always been a virtual type of person. Whether mm -hmm. it, it be uh, text messaging, instant messaging, DMing, inboxing, you know, whatever you want to call it. That's really always been my preferred method because I can tailor how I, how I like to connect with you in there. You know, I can practice it. I can download something like Grammarly that will correct my, my grammar and my English and put and construct 
a better presentation than what I can do uh, vocally. Because we all have issues with speaking orally. Sometimes you get a little too nervous, a little too excited, <laughs> and you're telling the story or you're trying to approach someone, and it's all over the place. It's like yeah. you understand it, but they're like, uh, what do you do again? And what you saying? <laughs> <laughs> Brother, I learned that doing lives for the first time. You know, when you when you go like Instagram live or something that, you know, it's completely different than having your script or doing an interview. You're you're just it's all you, and you gotta yeah, you gotta come with it. So to answer your question, virtual that's my world. I, li I live in a virtual world. I'm, I have a big imagination. That's my virtual first virtual world that I entered into. And then you know, like yeah. it, it's somewhat in the synchronicity of being something that's virtual it can't be proven but you know inside of you that you connect to something else that's bigger than you which is like yeah. the, we're all users sharing almost the same conscious stream if you look at it because no idea is ever original you own no thought all of it is just out there in the real big cloud and you're just connecting to it as you you know like you grow and develop so that's powerful man and that's really good uh the the chief seattle he says we all are on i'm paraphrasing he says we're all a part of the same uh web just different strands uh the, the information gets passed around uh, just like the energy does and i really agree with that wholeheartedly that there is so much that we think we're having a unique idea but really the first cart and buggy uh the same person had the same inspiration for the first automobile and the first electric car and the first car that will fly and all these things will all originate from a singular thought that was i want to have faster motion and get from point a to point b so we yeah we've had it's it's all just transferred and and made relevant based on the age and time that we live um i love that so thank you for that answer that was great uh, now i would like to know a few things about who you are and what you've been doing with your life recently, what has been your focus uh, in your life more recently here? Um, more recently, um, I'm trying to get to a position where I'm creating my own uh, network, so to speak, mm -hmm. so creating a version of BET as I interpret it. So I'm on Roku TV, I'm on Amazon Fire, and we're yeah. bit of the Arsenio Hall or Jay Leno or any big name like that type of talk show. And I'm bringing people on. They're actually performing in front of other A-lister, B-lister students. They're all celebrities to me. I don't break down the category. And I'm allowing for them to experience independent people on their level as they as they came up. So and they're really excited about that. They're like, man, I thought I was gonna come and get on here and talk the whole time. I'm like, no, we're gonna have fun. We're gonna change up the dynamics of interviewing when you come over to you know our platform. So mm -hmm. that I've been really working hard on, just trying to become a better director, producer, host, co-host. Uh, in my in my organization, I could go from being the CEO to the janitor like instantly. It, it doesn't bother me. So just working on being a better person when it comes to business, you know, treating people better and also mm -hmm. being more articulate and speaking up more when things I'm not vibing with in a respectful manner because I want everyone around me to have a sense of peace when they can talk knowing that I listen to them. That's good. That's good. I think I just saw the sunrise still on the phone. Why I keep lying? I'm not by. Why aren't you here with me? I'm trying to make it mine as soon as. I won't ever let you go Just say you're coming Come on over, girl, yeah Got a bottle on ice, yeah Are you packing a change of clothes? You're gonna need some tomorrow Should be wearing my robe No wardrobe You don't need nothing, I got you, babe Just come over Stay here tonight. Won't you stay here tonight? 
wait for me to turn around now I don't know how you got me up out of my bed But I'm coming when I usually be running I hope this don't end in sorrow I hope I don't regret tomorrow Cause your sex worth my time And you stay on my mind We keep falling asleep on each other every night It's about time Can't help it, I want you here tonight Won't you stay here Man, it's so important. I love that you incorporated both the business side of your development and the personal side of your development, because I think sometimes we, with that kind of open-ended question, we only think, oh, they must want the professional side. But it's really good to hear you talk about the personal development and things that you want to do uh, to really become a better person as you enhance your business. Now, you know, Arsenio Hall, you mentioned him, he used to have his woo woo woo. So are you gonna have a particular thing that you do on the show that will be a standout piece? Oh yeah, definitely, I appreciate that. Usually I do this thing, um, I learned it in, in spirituality where you vibrate your pineal gland and it creates mm -hmm. this, this energy of peace around your biometric field. Cause as you know, Ooh. all of them have a force field or energy field. So yes. while people are talking, I usually go, Mmm. Mmm. Mm. And then what it does, it starts to get them to do that. And if you notice when you do it, go, mmm. You can feel mm. the, your frontal cortex, which is your pineal gland. Well, they call it the third eye, but really it's your first eye. But your first eye inside your mind begins to vibrate and it makes you feel better. Mm. So it's like I'm showing people without telling them a spiritual way of being, like we spoke about technology. Because you know, the body itself is technology. Yes. So I'm helping you to refresh your main computer and it makes you feel better and you feel that you get at ease and I become like family then. So that's yeah. something that I do. And also towards the end, my thing is I always go holla holla. Cause I don't know if you ever seen Dave Chappelle. There was an older gentleman. He had a hat like mine. He had a jacket. Oh yeah. You remember? He was like, holla, 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 holla. <laughs> so I'm getting a call back from that. And you know how the subconscious works. Once you see something, it's implanted in there forever. And you'll go, wow, that's really great. But I heard that somewhere before. <laughs> <laughs> that is the truth. That is the truth. I love it. Now you you have interviewed uh, Oprah, but who are some people that you still want to interview that you haven't had the opportunity? 
Well, I, I just want to I, I just want to go around that question one one second and come right back. I definitely need Brian Jamal, you know, back on the show so we can have him airing on Ruku TV and Amazon Fire. So y'all make that happen. Tell, tell, tell Jamal he need to get back on our show. Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll let him know. We'll let him know. <laughs> now we'll move to your question. Um, to keep it real with you, and this gonna sound weird and cliche. I want to interview everybody. I, I even want to interview like Donald Trump. And I know a lot of, you know, African-American people or black people in this country, melanated people, they despise him. But I really think there's a deeper story in there. And there's some things that we can even learn. I would yeah. also like to interview even somebody like the head of the KKK. Because I just, I'm always intrigued. I'm, and I'm sure you are too. The, why do you think that way? What happened in your life? Who taught you that you being racist was was going to um, change the world by you having negative views about others, as mm -hmm. well as you know regular people, your Beyonces, your Jay Zs, your Obama. <laughs> I'm just an open person. I just want to know why do you think that way? Why does that mm -hmm. matter? Why is that relevant to you? Why are you pushing that agenda so hard? So. That's deep. I, I, you know, there are so many people who do things, and you wonder how you could ever get this mentality, but there are so many diverse thoughts and opinions and beliefs, and that's what makes us beautiful as, as a world. It's just uh, learning to understand one another and be able to live together with all of our uniqueness is is the challenge, is the ultimate challenge. But I, if anybody can do it, you can. I'm not, I'm not worried about that at all. Anybody can do it, you can do it. Now, who inspires you, my brother? Who who are a couple of people that inspire you and influence the work that you do? Okay, um, I can, I started a great foundation. I look at great people such as yourself, seriously, because you have, a, your portal is open through your heart. And I actually read and screenshot a lot of your quotes and a lot of knowledge that you put up, seriously, because I, I let it cultivate in my mind. I say, wow, this brother is really amazing. He understands the heart chakra. And a lot of information that you put, you post, it resonates with me. So I like mm -hmm. folks such as yourself who put out really good and great and cultivating information that turns into wisdom. I also look at nature. Nature, to mm -hmm. me, in my opinion, is the greatest teacher of all. You can look at a blade of grass and every single strand of that grass is different, but yet mm -hmm. it is still beautiful. Yes. It is synchronicity. You know, a lot of times we think things have to be even, but really it's harmony. Mm -hmm. So harmony supersedes equal because we were taught that. And I yeah. looked at one quote before. It said this man was in this, this village in Africa and there was so many children. It was a lot of children, could have been up to 30. He put something on a tree and he told them the first one that runs and gets it will be the champion. You know, typically in America, we're, we're always taught be first, be number one, be the best when you walk into the room. I'm not saying any of that is wrong, but there are yeah. times where we have to know I can't outrun my brother or my sister. I have to if I get there first, I can wait till you come too. And we both can achieve and grab that same thing that we're looking for. But back mm. to that, that point, he said that all of the children, instead of them running one by one, they all got together and walked towards the, towards what they were going to get. And they shared it with one another. Mm. Wow. That's, yeah, that's not our culture uh, as it is, as it stands right now. I think we rally around causes and situations uh we turn up for one another when something devastating happens it's kind of like the story where big mama dies and everybody comes back home you know that's that's the that's the issue but they've been very afraid uh throughout the course of time but something will bring us back the funeral will br bring us home uh, that's kind of where our culture is right now especially in the african-american community i feel as though we really suffer right now because of the lack of community do you see another way that that could happen to where we do better with really coming back to that african example i i think we can i think we have a great bit of work ahead of us as you know and i think on a 
individual level, once we start planting those seeds into the next generation or the current generation, because you're not old learner to do better. Yeah. Keep, whether people think that, whether we think people listen to us or not, your voice is very important. Like you spoke of a moment ago. We're on the WWW World Wide Web. Mm. This World Wide Web is truly a web. It captures us in it. Yes. How many hours a day, Brian Jamal, have you had people come on your show or you counsel? The first thing they do, they wake up, they get on social media. <laughs> Absolutely. First thing. They're not a business. They're not a brand. They're not an entity. They're not selling products or services. But the first thing you do is get that shows us right there. Number one, you're addicted. You have to be up. <laughs> Because if you take those devices away, just like people talk about their children, you take the, the people pouting and whining. I remember there was a point where social media was went down for a while. I think it was like Instagram. Do you know so many people was talking about committing suicide? Oh, yeah. They didn't know how to reach their friend, their family, the people that they just don't never met in person, but felt like they had this divine connection with and, and all of that. Yeah, people were really going through it. <laughs> We could use just like what you're doing with heart to heart. You're using this to plant seeds or to send subliminal messages right into their subconscious to help other people grow that you will probably never meet. You'll probably have a fan out there now that look at you like you're Dr. Phil and you will never know it. And I think even what we're doing and you're doing, that's a powerful way of teaching people is creating powerful, engaging, interesting and fun platforms like heart to heart. Therefore, it will begin to help those people. Even if we're on a small level, it doesn't matter. There is no big or small. It's just yeah. we are in the now. Yes, we remember the past. We honor we honor the current, but we also respect the future. And if you study quantum physics, it says that all of us are experiencing life at the same exact time. Yes. And time is a loop and it's not linear. That's why mm. you can anywhere in the world and i'm pretty sure even you brian jamal you can remember your grandmother your grandfather and you get a smell or a whiff or you say hmm my grandmother used to cook that or you sit in a chair and you feel like oh man my mom had a chair like this you're literally time traveling inside of your mind yes yes that is big i i actually teach that we do have body memory you know we have memory that even if you forgot your name uh, you would still know how to walk. Or if you forgot your name and you bumped your head and you forgot everything about yourself, uh, your body would, you wouldn't change colors. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't suddenly become a different gender. You wouldn't, you know, suddenly, you know, suddenly age faster uh, because your body remembers what it's supposed to be and, and what has happened to it. And I, I talk about it a lot when it, when it comes to people and engaging in, in actions with other people sexually, especially because your body remembers it all. It just remembers it. It remembers every event, things from childhood. You'll have a flashback. Like I had, I remember the other day I had a flashback about a playing a, a, a old Atari game. And I, I barely know how the Atari looks, but I remember playing it. And I just had this random flashback, like it played back in my mind. I remember the feeling of when I was a kid. So your body remembers things that your mind forgets. And that's a beautiful thing but it also can be dangerous thing in the sense that if you have set yourself up with a lot of bad memories, you will end up living a life of with a lot of fear, regret, shame, and remorse. So I'm glad to hear that you're talking about the positive side of that and being able to touch into the things that are really, really helpful and necessary for people. Dropping things, those subliminal things into people's hearts and minds that will encourage and inspire them. So great to see you doing this work. Um, I want to do a fun game with you that I love. It always ends up being great. So let it's called my lightning round. Mm. And all you have to do is give a word or a phrase, just a word or a phrase. And so I'll start you off really easily with this question right here. And I'll phrase it this way so you get a, a gist of how it flows. I am from... Oh, Georgia. Okay. Uh huh. All right. See, just that easy. So that's what we do. That's what we do. All right. So I feel the presence of God when darkness. Mm. Mm. That's good. That's good. 
I'm in food heaven when I'm eating. Natural foods. Ooh, yes. A favorite natural food? Oh, God, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I can't believe you got me. No, I, I got it. Okay. Um, natural or natural chicken. Mm, gotcha. I like it. Uh, I experience love when? When I know myself. The purpose of forgiveness is? Redemption. The artist I can sit and listen to on a rainy day? Tupac. <laughs> that'll, that'll keep you up right there. Tupac will take you all the way in. <laughs> I am most fulfilled when I? Believe in myself. Mm. Now, a follow-up to that would be, the biggest obstacle to my peace is? Believing in myself. Mm. I replenish my spirit with? Breath. Mm. Those good breathing exercises, yes. <laughs> um, what's the, this is a more long, form question but i like this one anyway what's the most difficult decision you've made to fulfill your purpose let go of, letting go of my past mm, that's yeah <laughs> if you could erase any habit any challenge or any disease what would it be mucus <laughs> that that sounds like somebody who talks a lot. <laughs> but, well, you do know mucus is the cause of a lot of diseases and ailments in people's bodies. I uh, yes, that is true, and it also is the vice of anybody trying to do an audio book. I know that for myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know that to be true. Okay, uh, no, thank you. <laughs> for coming on today. This has been great, man. It's always a pleasure to talk to you and see you. Real quick before we head out, I want to make sure you get an opportunity to tell everybody how to find you and all the amazing things you got going on. All right, y'all. First off, you got to you got to tap in with Brian Jamal. You know, I'm on heart to heart. I got to give that up first. I can't come on his show without telling him, man. I, I'm going to tell you that in a second if you, if you don't mind. Thank yeah. you. I mean, on my show, uh, on your show, you are a wonderful host. You are a wonderful human being. You are really the example of what a lot of us should subscribe to be when it comes from operating from the heart chakra, which is the greatest part of the body. A lot of times people think it's the mind, but it's the heart. Even when you go back to ancient Kemet, you will see that they preserve the heart. They mm -hmm. took the brain with a hot poker and scrambled it around, but they took the heart carefully and put it inside of a jar. And that shows you how powerful they understood what the heart could do. Mm. It transcended gender, it transcended race, culture, sex, whatever. And it showed us even back then that your heart is the most precious thing that you have. Mm -hmm. And to us, man, in our, in our culture, you are one of the most precious things that we have. A brother out here with a real heart, helping people and elevating them. But you all can find me um, on all social media platforms at G-Holla, um, that's G-E-H-O-L-L-A, or you can go to my website, which is www.geholla.com. So, G-Holla, holla, holla. Holla, holla. Thank you for those kind words. And again, thank you for being on with me, brother. It's such a blessing. Stay encouraged and inspired. You're doing amazing things. And I want to keep seeing you go higher and higher. Hello. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Have a good one, bro. You too, bro. Salute to you. All right.